What's up, everybody? So this is Dropwise back again with another CRT video wall video. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of a deep dive uh, on kind of the inner workings of this thing and um, how to get it working. If you are able to uh, get a hold of all the parts and pieces that you need to uh, to get it running, I'm going to be showing you how to get it set up, how to fine tune it, and some of the pitfalls that you might run into uh, when building uh, something like this. So. Uh, without further ado, I'll see you in the next clip. All right, guys. So just wanted to go over some of the parts and pieces uh, that goes into this project and kind of explain what each of them does. Um, so the first thing in the chain is going to be your laptop, PC, whatever your video source is, something that has an HDMI output. So I'm using a laptop with Resolume. Um, it's not the highest end laptop, but it, it does a good job. It's got a decent amount of RAM. It's got a decent GPU. Uh, as long as you don't get too in the weeds with um, effects and things like that, then it does a great job. And so from that laptop, I have an HDMI coming into this piece here. And this is the 3x3 video wall controller. It takes one HDMI input or DVI input if you're uh, using something a little bit older, uh, and it breaks it out into... Uh, nine HDMI outputs here and you don't have to use all of them if you're wanting to do like a two by two um, video wall or something a little bit smaller you can do that you just have to configure this thing accordingly uh, and I've gone over it a little bit in a previous video but it's a little bit finicky on how to get it set up but basically you just press the mode button until your display is outputting um, the correct uh, pattern, whether it's one by two, one by three, three by two, or three by three, whatever it is, there's a certain number of button pushes to get you there. Okay, uh, so from this piece here, you have nine HDMIs breaking out into uh, nine of these downscalers. Right, one for each TV. Since the TVs don't have HDMI input, you gotta have nine of these. Okay, they take mini USB power, all right, and they have your left and right audio and a video output. We only use video on, on this project. I don't have any use for audio. Um, some of you might, um, but HDMI in to uh, AV out. So just make sure you get it right when you're ordering it. It's HDMI to AV. It's really easy to get confused on these. They're almost identical to the ones. They're not bi-directional. So make sure you get the right ones. Um, these are about $4.50, $4.50 a piece on uh, eBay. Uh, and I'll have links to everything in the description um, for, for what I've picked up here. And then the next thing in the chain uh, in order to power all of these uh, little guys is uh, just a USB hub. It's just a 25 port USB hub and uh, You can get that from Amazon or wherever uh, just make sure it's powered with AC um, and It has enough ports to do uh, what you want to do with it. Um, I've got it right here um, It's it's really nothing super special. It's just a big chunky uh, USB Hub, okay, nothing special about that so <clears throat> that pretty much goes over all of the uh, the gear to get this working, um, but I'll just do a little brief summary again about how all of this stuff is hooked up. So you're going to have your output from your laptop, HDMI to your video wall controller. Your video wall controller is going to look for a 1920 by 1080 uh, resolution, and then it's going to break it out into your outputs there. Each one of those outputs goes down to your downscalers, um, and then make sure they're all set to NTSC. Uh, we don't use PAL on this, uh, on this format. Um, I've just, I've had, it'll kind of just look like black and white and have glitchy effects, unless that's what you're wanting to do with it. That's totally cool. Um, use your creative freedom in that way. But um, after the downscalers, you just run a single RCA type cable to each of the TV's video input. And it doesn't matter which color you use, uh, whether it's red, uh, white, or yellow, uh, as long as you are outputting off of the yellow port on the downscalers, you can use any color of those cables. So I bought a bunch of three packs that were splittable. So I split each one of the, the cables out and one of those three, uh, you know, a combo cable that had red, white, and yellow, one of those cables would run three TVs. So 
Just don't get too bogged down in the details about the color of everything. So without further ado, we're going to move on to the Resolume portion of this video. All right, what is up, everybody? So I'm just going to be getting into a little bit of the Resolume side of this project here. And I'm going to be talking about a little bit about how I set this up. Uh, and for those of you who are a little intimidated by Resolume or like this particular side of uh, this project, this is really just fine tuning stuff. This isn't the most important thing in the world. Um, I actually ran this project out at shows a couple of times before uh, I was actually able to fine tune like the, the slices and everything that I'm gonna cover here today. So don't worry too much about uh, this, if you're, if this is the breaking point for you, don't worry about it. But for those of you who want to take it a little bit further, uh, this is what we do. So under output, so first things first, um, I've been kind of experimenting back and forth with the composition resolution, and I'll explain why. Uh, this is currently set to 1920 by 1080, and I've been experimenting with square compositions since the TV is, the TV wall is essentially a square but it's give, been giving me some like scaling issues and stuff with the slices so i've actually just set it back to 1920 by 1080 for right now um, and i'm currently pretty happy with how it's looking um, on the output so this may change in the future um, i'm still learning but i just wanted to share what i've been uh, seeing with you guys along the way so this is kind of what i'm talking about here so if you've got a bunch of slices, you're going to need to fit them in here. So basically your content is going to spill out over the sides and you really just want to capture the center. So I'm going to save that and close it, put an output display two, and then we'll have our display back. So that the reason that, that happened is because uh, I changed the way the, uh, the formatting was, but if you are to look in here, I don't know why we've got virtual output, change that to display two. Um, if you got here, you've got your screen one, and then your display two is your output. Now in here we have slices for each one of the TVs, and you can see them all here. Um, I have ordered them and named them accordingly. Top left, top middle, top right, middle left, middle, middle right, so on. So that way when I get into step sequencing or doing things with uh, chasers, um, it makes it a lot easier to know which one is which. So one thing that I'm still sort of experimenting with is the size of each of these and the way that they're uh, laid out on here is, is not perfect. Um, this is part of that fine tuning to get your edges to match up. So if I if I were to run like let's say this abstract field here, you're probably not going to notice that anything is off about this this setup at all. But if you're running a spiral, let me go ahead and take off the mirror quad. Uh, you can kind of see it's important for the fans to to be in the same approximate location on the other TVs. Otherwise, they're going to look like kind of split, like offset. Kind of like when you stick a pencil in a glass of water and look at it from the side. It looks like the pencil is like split in half and like refracted. So you have to compensate for the gaps and the bezels uh, in Resolume. You don't have to, but if you want to really dial this in really nicely, uh, that is the thing to do. So... Uh, something I want to go over, um, since I've got it pulled up here, is this chaser masking. So, something really cool about doing this uh, CRT wall um, is being able to do something like this with the chasers. Um, and basically, all you have to do, once you have these slices made in your advanced tab, right here, Save and close. You have to go to view and then show slices right here. Make sure that's turned on. And then in your 
section over here where you have files, composition, effects, sources, there will be slices. Right here, you'll have all your slices listed. So if you generate under sources just a solid color and make it white, you can duplicate it to however many steps you want. I just do four just for the sake of uh, this tutorial. Um, but basically what you want to do is, let me go ahead and pause this. So for each of these steps, if you look down here, you can see which slices are applied to it. There's a couple different ways to do it. So one of the ways you can do it is by adding all your slices in here and then bypassing the ones you don't want on and do that for each step. So the way I've done it though is I only apply the slices that I want for each step. And you basically you just select them from over here, you drag them onto your clip here, your solid color, and you do it for each of the steps. And then you turn your layer blending mode to 50 mask and then you, in your layer section here, you turn on autopilot. Uh, you can even randomize it if you want to. Um, but yeah, you just turn on autopilot and then you select your first clip and then it'll start your sequence. Um, you can map uh, in, in your like MIDI or whatever your interactive uh, interface is, uh, start and stop keys for these. Because uh, a lot of times people want to use chasers as a type of... Uh, kind of strobe effect or something like that. Um, so just, you know, use this as a, as a tool for your, for your knowledge um, and, and see how it works for you. Um, but yeah, that just, uh, that sums it up pretty much. Um, just make sure, it's gonna take some trial and error. Um, and when I first made this, I was just making these screens here and for whatever reason, it wanted me to have a bottom screen as well for the full like scope of the whole screen. Um, so just try try some different things out, but uh, ultimately you just need your screen one and then different slices here for each of your TVs and then output transformation. It's gonna look something like this. Um, you may uh, you may expand them. You just just give it a shot. See how it works for you um like i said it's 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 not a it's kind of an imperfect science since there's there's no perfect measurements in between these tvs and see now that i've closed in those gaps it looks a little bit better um except for there's some bleed over at the bottom yeah so i'll fix that so that's that's kind of what i'm talking about though if you look in the in the output there, um, <laughs> these things are just they can be a little funny. So give it a shot um, and try it out with uh, some of your own content, um, some some other visuals you may be excited about or um, you know that have really captivated you. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this has kind of become the backbone of um, my stage production lately. Um, just doing cool stuff with TVs and uh, and putting putting some old technology to work. So, anyways, uh, that about does it for the resolution portion of this. So we'll go ahead and get back to it. All right, guys. So that does it for today's video. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, listening to me rant and ramble about my. Uh, old TV collection and what kind of uh, cool stuff I've been working on uh, doing with them. So if anybody has any questions or any other projects they'd like me to talk about, um, leave a comment down below. Uh, and if you like this kind of stuff, um, you're interested in kind of repurposing old tech uh, or how can you make your own stage effects for, for cheap um, or even free sometimes based on what kind of things you've got laying around, um, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it helps me out and uh, it, it helps me be able to continue to put out content like this. Um, it's it's hard to, to manage uh, with a full-time job and and everything else, but uh, I love doing it and I love, I love making these kinds of videos. So 
Y'all keep the comments coming and let me know what other kind of uh, projects you'd like me to cover next time.